Hey, and welcome to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to install some of the rarest and coolest fender flares in the vintage Porsche world. Behind me is a 1971 Porsche 911 ST Tribute, owned by my buddy Rob and built by TRE Motorsports and Dave Buzoglu. Now this car is a really cool factory sports purpose 911 that has a lot of interesting history and a lot of reasoning behind the way it looks the way it looks. And I thought if I'm gonna have a historical type show, I need to bring the guy on that knows more about Porsche lore and history than anyone else I know. He is none other than Mr. Dave Buzoglu from TRE Motorsports. Dave. Hello, sir. Good day, Michael. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. You have built this amazing 1971 911 ST. Can you talk a little bit about what makes an ST an ST and why it's an interesting vintage Porsche? Starting in 1970, Porsche wanted to start really competing in the rally scene. So taking their lightest car, the 911T, they homologated it for rally racing by adding what was called their rally kit, and they had the rally kit too. And the cars were not flared back then, 1970. Toward the middle to late 1971, they were able to homologate the car with larger flares, which is what you see here today. Question on that. Was it the kind of thing where, you know, it's Friday night and Gunter was like, I need more wheel under there and they they just figured out a way to make it work in a manner of speaking <laughs> yes but of course they had to get through the prying eyes of the fia to make sure that everything was kosher so to speak okay so they ended up going with uh an extra two inches in the front extra two inches in the rear and the wheels that were available at the time were really not that large you know you could you get an eight inch wheel uh they wanted to go with nines. Those came along a little bit later. So at first they couldn't have uh, the Fuchs wheels like you see all the way around here today on this car. Uh, they had Fuchs wheels in the front and mini lights in the rear. Because right, because they were wider. They were wider. They didn't make a wider Fuchs wheel, you know, wider than an eight. So they ran 15s? 15 inch wheels yeah. all the way around. Uh, tires were primarily by Dunlop, you know, at the time. They were a factory uh, supporter, you know, for yeah. Porsche. And the cars are meant for competition and mainly for rally and hill climb. And then, of course, go for the endurance races like Le Mans, right. you know, Spa, etc. The thing is with the, the ST flares is four people could bring their ST, actually four people could bring their factory STs and they could all have different flare setups on them. They were all hand hammered. Yeah. Okay. They, I'm sure they used an English wheel or I guess you want to call it a German wheel. Right. But anyway. They used their English wheels and their hammers and they pounded these out and they welded them on, you know, to the cars. They hmm. were meant for competition. If you were to see the original cars up close and personal that have not been restored, you're going to see some a little more lumpy than others. The wheel openings are slightly different in all four corners. So it, it's pretty unique. They're kind of rounded, which it's is what round. I really like about the, the flare is they're, yes. they're not quite RSR. They're not quite wide enough as to have a really, really wide 11 inch flare. Correct. Is it a nine? It's actually a nine inch flare in their terminology all the way around. So nines and nines. Interesting. Okay. But again, they would run a seven on the front and a nine on the rear regarding the wheels hmm. because of the tires available that they worked with at the time. And, and because sometimes those tires were a little bigger because they were doing rallies, this front flare in particular has a more like opened um, wheel opening than like a stock 
911 was. It's quite elongated. Because of the really tall tires available at the time, 25, 26 inch tall competition tires and mm. quite wide, you needed quite a bit of swing room to turn the wheels left or right through the range, especially when the suspension is compressed, you know, as you're going over humps and bumps and jumps. Yeah. So for that reason... It's right, yeah, because they need to be turning and the thing needs to compress. Correct. So you need a lot right. of space. You need a lot that of makes space. Sense. It's quite different than the uh, road courses, you know, that right. they would run with. So if you look at back in the day, period correct pictures of these cars competing, you're wondering, gee, those tires look on a bit on the narrow side. They're kind of stuck inside the flare a little bit. That was by design because, again, they had this homologated. They had this approved for competition for both rally, hill climb, and, of course, road racing as well. Well, very cool. Thank you for bringing this beautiful car and, and all the work uh, not only you've done on this. If you guys want any, literally, any sort of modification or you've got a stock car you want to make look like a 911R, an RSR, an ST, TRE has all of that in any variety that you want, meaning you can get a couple of flares or you can buy a whole kit. You can literally get, you know, the brown Santa, otherwise known as the UPS guy, to show up with a pallet of parts and convert your entire car. Or you might need that weird washer from 1972 that was only yeah. available that year or whatever, but you guys you can do it. all that stuff. You got it. Very yes, good. Uh, the link is in the description for TRE as it is on every single one of my Blasphemy Build videos. You just have to look in the description, you'll see. So what we're gonna do now is what I think is the most important and most difficult part of any kind of flare job, which is precise measuring and affixing the flare to the car before we do anything else. So I'm gonna grind a bit on the outside, make sure that we have a nice clean way to uh, weld it, and then we are going to take a ton of measurements on this car and make sure that they transfer to the Blasphemy build. So what we've done is we've made markings on the orange car and Dave is diligently measuring and we are making sure that our numbers for instance that's 130 millimeters from this corner to this corner and we want to make sure we duplicate that when we do the front flare now in this particular instance the front flare is going to be a little tricky we're going to figure that out in a minute but we're going to start with getting the rear flares positioned and then quickly tacked on okay so we've got the body mostly prepared i've ground down here i've ground down the flare we've got the measurements from the st thanks to dave and now we're going to spend a few minutes making sure that the flare is precisely positioned on the car uh, once that's there i'll probably put a, a tech screw or two in to make sure it stays where it stays and then i will tack it on the outside good sleeping band b-roll Okay. Go in? Wow. What? Are you close? Yeah. Within 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. You want to want to move it back a little? How does it line up with the torsion? You have a piece of pipe. You Pretty close. The end of it. Yeah. They do actually. Okay. Once we get that. Why don't you get? your rear correct okay and i will clamp it on this side first because it's an easy clamp got it okay vice grip brand i mean we've got a little bit of flex in the yeah in the flare flare itself which we will measure on the orange product how many what, how much you need to go for inch it's right there. That's what I'm going to do too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this measure here is whack. Is what? I'm just taking a quickie here. Yeah. 11 inches. Okay, so we've got the flare precisely positioned. And what I like to do here, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can use tape. You can use what I call tech screws, which are self-tapping screws. I like the black ones, not the silver ones. Or what I like to do is actually tack the flare on in a few different spots. That enables me to put a little bit of pressure on it, make sure it follows the contour of the car itself. And then if we need to make adjustments, 
It's a little harder, obviously, but we've, we've put a, a fair bit of work into making sure it's positioned correctly. It's probably 90% of it is getting the positioning right. Um, and then I will tack this thing on and I'll show you guys what the rest of this thing looks like. We're in the ballpark and it doesn't make any sense, just see it. Mm -hmm. Ouch. Did you? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Oh yeah. That's it's a little off, but it, it'll yeah. it'll settle in. Yep. Once it's cut. Mm-hmm. Oh, looks like it's not right. Because there's so much warpy tension. Mm-hmm. On here. Like it flattens and it comes up and Kind of Froze up again, yeah. Bit. What about removing that tack there? Yeah, this one right here? Yeah. Yeah, that's, this one you see all off. Question is, do you think the move could be, do we cut through this one first and make sure that this measurement is spot on, right? And then release these other ones, because this will be affixed yeah, in the corner solid. when right. it's Parallel and correct. Mm-hmm. That makes some more sense. Looking at it from the front. Yeah. The angle at the back is good. It's yeah, it's, good. it comes in a little bit, right? Yeah, it's real good. Okay. Give yourself a squat and a look at that. Squat down. Squat down from, from here, maybe, where you can see the side. Mm-hmm. Right here, right through here. Look at the look at the angle of that. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's going it's, up. It's looping. But how the heck do we fix that? You no, no, it means there's a twist. It means there's a twist. So if if it, if you were to twist the front of the flare this way, this end goes like that. So it's this that's happening. Okay. Well. So right now it's twisted like this. Okay. Correct. So the so. front end's being pulled, and this end's popping out that way. Yeah. Like that. So I wonder if the move is to, like I said, uh, release these, mm -hmm. release the whole thing actually. Yes. Set this thing up right. Parallel. And put like one tack there so that right. side stays correct. So I think that's going to be the deal. I think I've got to pull these yep. and uh, try, try again. So I had it on, I had it clamped, I had it actually tacked all the way around, but it, it wasn't feeling right and it didn't look right. This lip right here, viewed from a distance, didn't do what you wanted it to do. So I pulled the tacks off. You can see how off we were the first time. That's like a half inch off in the front. Uh, but now it's resting, sitting much better. It's not under the same kind of tension that it was. And I feel much better now about, again, sort of tacking it on and, and keeping it where it is, getting it basically done on the other side as well. So we've done a lot of measuring. We even used the laser level to try to make sure that each side was consistent. And it appears to be. So once again, I'm gonna put, I have one tech screw in here and a couple of clamps. I'm gonna put a couple of tacks in here. This one's laying down way better than the other side did. So maybe we're just getting better at it. Or maybe these cars are completely different from car to car and side to side and day to day. That could also be. Now's where things get a little interesting. So here's where we have a bit of a challenge. Definitely. As we talked about earlier, these flares were multiple, multitudes of different iterations of these flares. Correct. Now I love how this orange car looks. Mm -hmm. I would like mine to look similar to this orange car. Problem is, these flares are about 40 millimeters too wide. The wheel well itself is a little bit too wide. So I'm gonna have to section it. Meaning, I'm gonna cut this thing in half. We're gonna make sure that the car itself is measured correctly. And then we have these pieces. So 
So what we're going to do is make sure the car itself is measured correctly and we have the important parts mounted in the correct spot, meaning we've got the right gap here and then the right gap on the other side, which will cause this piece to overlap because I'm going to have to cut it in half right out of the gates. Then we will, I don't know, clamp it or put a screw through it or something and make sure that the orientation between the two pieces is okay because I'm going to have to metal work it and finish it and do all the things. It's going to be much more complicated in my life. But then we have a nice arch and a nice flare. So that's going to be this little challenge here. And Dave, I'm going to have you hold this and I'm going to grab a table. So what I've got to do here is try to determine a couple things. One, where is the, the center? And sometimes it's like the virtual center of the arch. And two, is there an area that's kind of flatter, I guess, right? Flatter than another? So what do you think here? I'm, I'm kind of looking at like here-ish. Yeah, you've got a good eye, you know, right here, close, just off center. Yeah. Okay. I think that'll work quite well and you'll be able to match the curvature. Give me that to about there. One edge or the other, doesn't matter. There was once one, now there is two. Okay. Let's see how we did. I mean, this is where it's supposed to go, right? Without even doing any measurement. Correct. We'll get each side right, and then we'll worry about right. setting up the middle. Yeah, once I do that, it settles, it settles right in. The flare itself, the opening looks pretty good. The opening's pretty decent. I like the elongation of it. Yeah. Just the initial measurement from the yeah. orange car. Here's what you can do. Go ahead and put the front half behind the rear half, okay? So mm. that way there isn't the tension between right, the two right, halves right, right, right. meet. And just see how, okay. Let's see, and then we can rotate yeah, the front right. a little bit. Yeah. This piece of this flare has never been good. Right. It's always been sticking out. It's yeah. not like, it, this needs to be metal worked. Yeah. Like a champ. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put a tech screw through here and then okay. get the whole thing on. Okay. And that might enable us to yeah, have a little bit of Got more it. aggressive wiggle room. Got it. Oh yeah, baby. What do we got? Ten and a half ish. A little over ten and a half, which you know you've got this to deal with. So right. you're going to come in just a little bit narrower. But we're not but putting twenty six and a half tires in here either. Exactly. We're putting twenty fours probably. Exactly. exactly. Which is what these are, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think it works well. This has taken some serious brain power, and design to get to this point we're really happy with how the flare sits on the car it's got a little slight uprising the the blend is great in the bodywork so now i've got to make these two pieces equal one for that i'm going to do the cut and butt as you guys know i'm a big fan of so basically i'm just going to uh use the cutting wheel to come in this way I'm going to flatten the two pieces together and tack them in the middle. And I'm going to do that all the way up and down this thing until they have a perfect butt weld. Once I've done two or three of them here, I can release this tech screw to do the other parts. Dirty little tramp. There it is. So this piece of brass helps you from burning through, and this is very thin right here, so I'm burning through all over the place. Look, Dave, we made a new thing. 
Use your reference lines, kids. It's alive! So this thing needs to be body worked and uh, flattened out a little bit. I need to work on this section. That wasn't great here. Get the right kind of dollies involved. Kill this tack right here because it's wrong. It's like overlapping and it needs to be level, but everything else is really flat. Uh, really happy with it, Dave. I think it looks good. Once this uh, lip gets welded up and I can sort of body work this till it's smooth, it's gonna look awesome. And then it's sitting really nice, really nice, really flat on the body itself. And I think that's a good mod, man. I think it came out good. What do you think, cameraman? It's looking really good. It's very level. Well, you've got your symmetry right. Yeah, this and like came out you, nice. Like you said, you work the uh, welded area so yeah. it's nice and flat. Yeah. It'll be good. I think so too. So, that is, well, at this point, I'm going to kick Dave out of here. He's got things to do instead of hanging out here in the garage. Come on in here a little bit, Dave. Uh, what do you think of the progress? What do you think of what we did today? We got three out of four done, at least placed where they're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, to, to get a car looking like the orange car that's mm -hmm. in all the magazines, it's been an excellence cover model, right? Yep. Um, European car, excellence. Yeah. It's just, it's it's just killer. Magazines. Yeah. <laughs> it really does require this much attention to detail. And, and uh, I don't know how many times we measured today. A hundred. Yeah. You know, a hundred <laughs> to, get, to get these things right. Because, you know why? Because people like Dave are walking around cars and coffees going, yeah, that, uh, that That's flare's right. wrong. That's that flare's right. wrong. wrong. You can tell it's three millimeters proud. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so anyway, dude, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a treat now, and I'm going to let you hear and, and listen to this thing as it goes out of my neighborhood, because it is something to behold. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate your time, Thanks, as always, and all your expertise. You and uh, you guys stick around for the rest. I'm going to finish buttoning up at least this one flare, and uh, probably do the other one off camera, but I wanted you guys to see the process of, you know, getting something so permanent and so important on the car. Thanks, buddy. Oh, how are you going to sound like that? That's so ridiculous. Pretty blended. Feel good. Feel good. This looks nice. All right. So here we are after a killer day in the office. This thing looks great. It's still a little bit of a low spot here. So I'm going to work on getting this thing body worked out until it's as smooth as I can make it. So I'm not going to tack it onto the car yet. I'm also going to leave it off because I want to be able to take measurements so I can do the other one in the exact same way. These, however, can be tacked on at any time, so I'll probably do those in the next video. I will cut and butt this thing. I'm super excited about that. Both rears are on and ready to be welded, and then I will fabricate the other one just like you saw it for the other 
front fender here. But uh, very exciting day. Very exciting day. Absolutely epic day in the garage today. I'm so happy with how the car looks. I've been thinking about doing these flares for weeks and weeks, really months, because they've been sitting around my garage for a long time. Uh, special thanks to Dave from TRE for coming out, driving the orange car an hour just to be here so we could measure it and show off some of those amazing sounds. If you don't follow Dave on Instagram, it's TRE Motorsports. Go to their website, tremotorsports.com. If you really want to see how much of a true baller Dave is, go to the Pelican forums and look for TRE Cup. It might be an underscore, it might be a straight one word, but he has more knowledge about these cars and their origin and history and racing heritage. It's just so cool. So can't thank him enough for coming out. Anyway, that's gonna be it for the day. I will probably turn the camera on tomorrow when I continue to work on these rear flares, getting them tacked in and uh, hopefully make the other front flare and then we are this much closer to getting this thing dialed. All right, we'll see you next time.